started uh, sort of uh, Socrates with the idea of actually democratizing sort of ad technology for everybody. Uh, you, if you see basically uh, there's a lot of uh, work that large companies like a Shopclose or a eBay, these guys do and they employ very uh, sort of extensive big data platforms uh, which helps uh, sort of do a lot of interesting analysis and I'll kind of quickly go uh, forward, I'll, I'll show you. So basically, see, this is how a, a medium business always, I think, thought of business, right? I mean, he knew his customers very well. Uh, there were a few kind of hundred customers that would come to him regularly. So they knew what they wanted, who likes, say, lily or who likes uh, uh, roses, so on and so forth. Uh, now, as we sell increasingly online, it becomes extremely difficult to know more and more about your consumer uh, because you don't have a personal connect. Uh, similarly, I think there's a lot of browsing behaviors that uh, come into play online and people need to kind of start looking at stuff more carefully and closely, especially for the mid-businesses, small, mid medium businesses to succeed. Uh, and this is what's, what we are doing today, right? I mean, I think it's completely replaced by the fact that somebody adds to card and sells online very, very quickly. Uh, and this is, um, I think, what we do. Uh, we basically try to analyze all of the customer behavior. We try to analyze the web blogs of what is doing, who is doing what to come up with more sort of interesting stuff uh, for the business so that they can sell better and they can understand their customers better. Uh, so the problem is this. Uh, Today, uh, if you look at most, I mean, I, I think you guys have, would have seen sort of retargeting ads, etc., right? I mean, you would have seen that you've purchased something, you've seen something, uh, big companies kind of, I mean, uh, ads start following you. Uh, and there is uh, very little personalization that happens on, I think, smaller uh, sort of uh, e-commerce websites, right? You would see a lot of personalization that Amazon does to their website. Uh, so literally the store that Amazon is showing to you as a person is completely different from the store that they're showing to the next guy as a person. So think about it this way. Today, uh, there is this, uh, say for example, if you uh, surfed uh, on Amazon uh, this particular purse, and let's uh, assume this is Amanda. Uh, this gets tagged as a bag visitor. So somebody says that there's a person who's interested in a bag. Uh, we don't know anything about this person at all and we are not analyzing it any more further. Basically what we do is we basically take this, start kind of showing that person the same thing again and again, both on the same website or in some other website. Uh, the ad would then start looking something like this, best deals on bags, so on and so forth, uh, fairly boring. Uh, now let's kind of multiply this to four uh, uh, sort of uh, users. Um, and there's Amanda, there's Betty, there's Carla, there's Dan. Uh, and I'll give you a little more information about Amanda, right? Amanda is a trend follower. So she basically looks at new stuff, but she largely follows what people like. Uh, Betty, on the other hand, is a fashionista. So she really wants to be ahead of the curve. She wants to have the best bags, no matter what the price. Uh, Carla is a deal hunter. She basically likes good products but at, when they are at a fair value. Dan on the other side is a person who is generous, he basically has uh, sort of gifts uh, all the time to his girlfriends. Now the problem with today's world is that in the online world it is very difficult to determine uh, who is what. Everybody is a user and we basically look at one kind of funnel and say this is what my conversion rate is. Uh, so we don't do any customization, personalization. Now, uh, so everybody is a bag visitor. And the ad, that's why, is extremely boring because that's the best thing that you can tell everybody that this is a bag. So you largely talk about the bag, you don't talk about the user at all. Uh, or talk to the user about what he would like. Right? And this is what I think Coke figured out a long time back, right? I mean, uh, Coke figured out that everybody wanted a drink. I mean, that was very obvious. Uh, they had a product that everyone liked. But they started marketing it differently, right? Uh, they marketed Coke to people who would want to share it with a friend. So they started, for, to a certain set of users, they said, share a Coke with Kate, which is your friend. And at the same time, they started kind of selling Coke in a very different way uh, to people who would just want something, right? So they started telling a set of people uh, that uh, think, uh, man set foot on the moon because he wanted to. So you should drink Coke because you want to. Uh, uh, right, and this is what we are trying to apply more and more to the online world. Uh, so we've boiled it down to these four principles of selling. Whom to sell, how to sell, when to sell, what to sell. And this is where I think a lot of data analysis comes into play to figure out uh, all of these kind of four aspects of it. 
Uh, quickly, I think what we do all the time is basically try to analyze and capture as much information about a user and create something we call a persona uh, so that we know a little more about the user, which then can be used to either personalize the website or show him kind of better ads. Uh, so whom to sell to? Right, uh, and I have spoken about all of these four users. Right, I gave you kind of examples. Now, how do you usually? I mean, using analytics, you can figure out which person is which. Uh, so, Amanda, as I told you, is a person who follows. Right, uh, and we figured uh, that uh, for such set of people, uh, they usually would go to the website, they go to a particular page, and they would look for new and popular products all the time. So, they would go and do that sort. Uh, so once they did that sort, we could then tag them with a slightly better message and say that this person is actually that. Uh, when we analyzed, I mean, our conversion rate for such people was 9% uh, without a sort uh, in the next session, and that jumped up to 14% uh, uh, for people who were sorting. So suddenly, basically, uh, the person who's kind of in the next session, the chances of him buying were very, very high. And that is kind of what told us that uh, this person is a specific type of person who's trying to uh, follow trends. Right? So suddenly, this, this whole list of people is not a bag visitor anymore, it is a trend follower. Uh, Carla, on the other side, I told you, is a deal hunter. Right? Uh, so what, she, what does she do? She looks at coupons, she uses coupons all the time. Or she comes to the website and she does a very quick discount high to low kind of filter. This tells you a lot about the person again, right? Uh, so Carla very quickly becomes a deal hunter. Uh, here, I mean, frequent buyer history on such people is very high again. Whenever they get a discount, people buy. Uh, so you need to kind of then figure out what you want to sell to them, right? I mean, and that conversion history on the next session went up from 6% to 17%. Uh, Right? So tag them as a deal hunter. Betty on the other side would look at newer brands, very, very fashionable, high value brands uh, all the time. Uh, and that's kind of what helped us figure out uh, what uh, Betty liked. Uh, here, they would do site searches uh, very often. Uh, so they would come and look for very specific high value brands uh, and come to those pages. Uh, that helped us kind of identify what Betty liked. Uh, and we kind of started tagging her as a fashionista. Dan on the other side was a much tougher problem in general, right? I mean, how do you figure out that this person uh, uh, sort of uh, is a generous gift giver? Uh, what we figured is uh, by using uh, gift uh, uh, sort of wrapping. So people who are consistently kind of gift wrapping, uh, we started tagging as people who, uh, who uh, are generous gift givers or basically they're high on gifting, right? So to them, uh, the message at on the website or even off the website always has to be about how they can kind of impress somebody with a gift. Uh, right? And uh, again, I mean, I think for all four of them, uh, the uh, amount of time spent on the website is very, very different. I think uh, Dan would basically be very quickly kind of uh, buy whatever he wants, uh, very transactional in nature. Uh, a Betty would kind of look at it for longer periods of time. So you'll find very different kind of time spent on the website for each of the personalities. Uh, right, and Dan is, of course, our generous soul. Uh, so now, uh, we've arrived at uh, four different personas uh, using uh, data analysis uh, for bag visitors. Uh, they are not bag visitors anymore. Uh, they are trend followers, fashionistas, deal hunters, uh, and uh, generous souls, as we call them. Uh, now, uh, coming to how do you sell then? Uh, right. Uh, so this was who, uh, uh, who right? Um, now how uh, is very simple. As soon as you have a personality against it, I think it becomes very, very straightforward. Uh, the ad to uh, Amanda, who's a trend follower, uh, goes. Uh, everyone's buying this. Right. Just makes her life so much easier. Decision making so much faster. Uh, to a deal hunter, we talk about it's raining bags. Uh, talk about how much is available, uh, sort of uh, at discounted rates, etc. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, to a fashionista, it's a must-have bag. Uh, these are the newest, fresh from the runway. Talk about stuff like that, and suddenly they are very, very excited. Uh, here, I mean, it is more about shower her with love. It is a much more subtle kind of messaging, right? So it basically completely depends on the kind of person you are. And once you determine that, uh, the language that you would talk to them is far more conducive to helping them make a decision faster. Right? So this is what we came up with. Uh, 
uh, then uh, I think the answer uh, to the question I think uh, went to sell, right? I mean, I think again, um, uh, th if you see the whole uh, sort of uh, online world, uh, it's it's uh, a lot about figuring out how fast and uh, when should you do stuff. This is a good experiment. I mean, not an experiment actually, a marketing tactic that Oreos had done in I think 2013. There was this blackout in uh, New York, uh, and these guys within like a span of 30 minutes came up with this uh, amazing ad um, uh, and they just posted it on Twitter uh, which said you can still dunk in the dark and this was during the Super Bowl uh, right and uh, literally I think these guys were sort of this was like the campaign of the year etc but again I think being on trend uh, being faster is going to help you build a brand very very quickly uh, so this becomes extremely critical. Uh, now we basically took this uh, into our world and we said how do we do this for more people all the time and we figured out trends on uh, when, right? So some sample trends. Uh, regular people who are basically, you'll find set of people who are basically just always flying, right? And they have specific times when they fly. So they'll book flights for the next month on the 25th all the time because they need to fly on the second or something. Uh, so you can find a lot of sets like that or you'll find a set of people who will always always splurge on gadgets uh, after payday. So first or second or something like that, you'll find a lot more kind of buying that happens. Now what you need to do is you need to kind of figure out how you tag these people separately, separate their towns so that you can kind of uh, be more aggressive on your communication at that point of time when you know that your chances of converting the user are going to be much much better uh, and again I mean I think this this goes back to the uh, I think um, uh, US scenario where we I think uh, all learn from a lot is um, retailers in the US are now counting about 13 to 20 shopping sessions uh, instead of uh, counting only like four right I mean we in India largely we think about um, I think Diwali is one big one I think a little bit is coming up uh, for Christmas and then I think the large e-com players are kind of creating some around a big billion day or something like that. Uh, but uh, US, this is like bo boiled down to a science now. Uh, there are almost 13 to 20 shopping sessions, uh, seasons uh, sort of uh, in the US that are already created. Uh, and you can kind of create your own small thing around it. Uh, figure Once you figure that this is exciting to the users, it has a different chill value. Uh, and then what to sell? Right. Uh, so I'll, I'll give another example. I think uh, this happens in, uh, um, um, I, I forget the name of the place, but basically there is this guy in Hard Rock Cafe, I believe, uh, in the US. Uh, there's this guy who basically goes around uh, making noise around um, with a tequila um, bottle in his um, uh, hand um, and his whole purpose is basically to get people to drink more right so he'll, he'll keep shouting uh, shots anyone shots anyone uh, basically what he, what they've done is they figured out that it's it's very simple right if you figure out your what are you selling when uh, as soon as somebody's glass is empty the chances of people actually taking up shots very quickly is much much higher the amount of sale that goes up uh, is significantly higher and he makes it in a fun way so people don't kind of mind him all the time uh, <coughs> So again, I mean, I think uh, it comes back to uh, understanding the consumer better uh, and understanding who's basically a say, uh, gym goer versus a traveler versus uh, I think uh, uh, office goer, so on and so forth, right? Uh, another example here uh, is uh, I think Iron Maiden. Uh, so Iron Maiden was going through a very tough time, uh, largely due to uh, music piracy. I mean, I think nobody was making money on albums anymore. And these guys were doing tours across the US. So what one very interesting thing that these guys did was they analyzed all of their uh, BitTorrent traffic and analyzed as to where uh, it came from. Uh, and they figured out a lot of countries across the world where these guys never thought of doing tours. Uh, but um, these their albums were very, very popular. So they were getting downloaded a lot. Uh, also, uh, they figured out what kind of songs were getting downloaded and post that they changed over their itinerary completely to focus on those countries. And in the next five or six years, Iron Maiden was one of the most profitable bands um, that lived even in the world of music piracy. Uh, so uh, I think it, it, it just becomes uh, more and more about how much data can you analyze, how better can you analyze and can you figure out customer segments that you can double down on. Uh, uh, another uh, classic case study uh, from Target, 
uh, was uh, they figured uh, there was this uh, set of women who were suddenly buying a lot of unscented lo lotion, cotton balls, unscented soap. Um, and uh, the uh, sort of understanding was that they, they figured that this was happening because these guys, these women were uh, pregnant. So they started sending them specific mailers um, in that kind of time frame and literally that business grew by 30 percent uh, for them uh, during that time frame. So I think uh, it all boils down to there's a lot of stuff that can be done if you understand your consumer right uh, and focus a lot of energy on understanding that consumer. Uh, so I mean this is uh, quickly I think I mean this is I think from one of my tech talks uh, but I mean these are the kind of technologies that we are using uh, to do uh, to do this analysis we, data goes into GBs already I think uh, but there's a lot of very very cool stuff that can be learned all the time.